Hello. Hello. Uh, hi. Uh, so this is basically an installation on how to install TI Tina for Mac. Now, uh, first you need to go to. You can do a Google search for basically TI uh, or Tina dash TI, or go to www.ti.com slash tool slash Tina dash TI right here. Uh, don't worry, I'll include this link. Go ahead and download the version for Windows XP or 7. Uh, you might be like, well, this is a Mac. Uh, I can't run that on here. That's true. But what we're going to do is we're going to download um, an emulation um, software. So first, go ahead and download this. Uh, I'm not going to do it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It'll give you a zip file. Go ahead and open up the zip file. And the zip file will actually give you uh, the following file. I put it in my uh, Dropbox, uh, but it'll, uh, the zip file will give you an executable called uh, tina90-tien.exe. Don't do anything just yet with it, just uh, unzip it. Now the next website I'll give you is for this thing called Wineskin. Uh, this is a branch off of Wine, which is an open source uh, Windows emulator that allows you to run executables. Uh, on this case, Wineskin is running executables on Mac OS X and very nicely it runs on Yosemite. So go ahead and click here and download it. Uh, once again, that'll give you a zip file. Open up the zip file and go ahead and open up uh, that and it'll give you this little thing called Wineskin Winery. Now I'm going to put a link for downloading Xquartz, but I don't think you actually need to install Xquartz. Um, I think I kind of rushed into that before really realizing what I was doing. Um, and then I'll also give you guys a link on uh, a video on uh, how to install Wine, but I'm going to go through that right now. So first what you want to do is you want to click on the Wineskin Winery, which that's what you got originally from this website here that was in a zip folder. Go ahead and click on that. Um, it's ba I've already installed this. Uh, it's pretty straightforward to install. Um, but uh, basically what will pop up is you'll see a thing where it has a bunch of different wine engines. Uh, it comes with uh, wine uh, 1.7.31. Uh, this is the latest one. But you can add new engines if they come up. So you can, you can press the add button here. And I have the latest one, but you can also install older ones if you want. Right now, we're not going to do that because we're just going to use the latest one. We're going to create a new blank wrapper. Uh, so basically, this right here is allowing you to basically create a wrapper that will run an executable in Mac. So click on Create New Blank Wrapper. And we're going to call this, uh, I like saying TI Tina for some reason, but it's actually Tina TI, but I'll say TI Tina because it's for me. Tina. Go ahead and press OK. And this will take a few minutes to do its business. Uh, OK. Uh, just get, let it go through the process of configuring TI Tina. Also, if uh, you feel like supporting open source community, they do have a donations. No, I'm kind of bad about that, to be honest. I've, well, I did donate a little bit back in the day, but not much these days. <laughs> Anyways, it'll pop up this little thing right here. Uh, it's telling you where your wrapper is located. Uh, so you can find your wrapper under users, your account, uh, your name, applications, wine scan. I'm not going to view it right now because I can find that. Press OK. So you can go ahead and close the wine skin winery. Go ahead and close that. And then if we, uh, I, uh, I have it open over here, but I'll open it here. Uh, so let me close that really quick. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this screen. I'm going to open up a new tab. So Apple T or Command T to open up a new tab. I'm going to go to my, oops, one sec. So there's a couple different ways. The easiest way I find to get to it is actually if you go to your, so what I'm trying to open right now is the, if I clicked view folder it would have taken me right there, but it's good to know where it is. So if I open up my hard drive and go to users, my username, applications, it's under Wineskin, and then I have this thing called TITINA. 
Let's go ahead and click on it uh, one time. If you double click on it, oh, this is always a little funky. Uh, right click, say open. Uh -huh, so I was acting up. So uh, to right click with the latest Mac, you put two fingers down and you do a right click with your other finger. So go install software. So right now this is an emulator, but we haven't actually installed the executable. So go ahead and say install software. Choose executable. These options below allow you to copy information to, basically what you're doing is you're creating a C drive and this wrapper is going to call uh, an executable on that C drive. I could have called this uh, Windows emulator and done other things, but you would technically would usually want to create a wrapper per executable. And I could actually technically share my wrappers and you guys would be able to open them. But go ahead and choose executable. I need to go, in my case, it's in my Dropbox folder, but your executable will be most likely in your downloads folder. So go ahead and choose uh, tina90-tien.exe, press OK. Now will take a few minutes to actually take care of this. And uh, go ahead and press next, I agree. Go ahead and put some username in here, you know, UC Davis or something like that for the company name. Go ahead and leave it that as this is, this right here is the emulation C drive and I'll show you where that is later. Press next, 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 keep it US ANSI, next, uh, leave all this, next, and let it install. Okay, as it installs, we'll just wait very calmly here. And it just takes about a minute to install, not very long. So now after it's done installing, it'll ask you to put a, well, okay, say no. You don't want a shortcut because it's basically going to put a shortcut on your desktop here on Mac, which doesn't help you. So just go ahead and say no. And you don't need to see the readme file, so say finish. And then Winskin is currently busy. What it should pop up next is going to ask you which executable do you want to associate with this wrapper? So basically, we've gone through the installation, we've installed these executables. Now, we can actually change this later, but it's actually on the wrong executable. It says author, manager, EAXE. So we need to actually go to Tina. So I don't know what you'll see under yours, but one of them should be Tina.exe. So if we go ahead and click that, go ahead and press OK. Now what we can do is we can, uh, you can do screen options, stuff like that. Let's go ahead and quit for now. Now the next time we double click on Winskin here, it should open up TI Tina, which it does, which is good. So let's go ahead and close that really quick. And let's go ahead and add it to our doc really quick. I'm going to put it next to my LT Spice because, well, LT Spice is a little easier to set up than, than, than Tina, but go ahead and double click on it again. And now it'll open up the uh, TI Tina. Now if we go, if we go back to this folder and right click and say open, uh, I think it will give us the little thing that pops up where we can change the settings, but I'm not 100% sure. I think we have to edit those under the Tina settings, but anyways, um, if you show contents of the wrapper, it'll, so basically what I did, I right clicked and showed package contents and this is your C drive and this is some other things. So before we look into the C drive, go ahead and open up Tina again. I don't know why I keep closing it. Uh, so double click on that. It'll open up Tina. And let's just build a quick circuit really quick. So let's grab a resistor. Let's grab another resistor. Let's go ahead and stack them. Oops, uh, I'm not very good with this software. And then let's add a voltage source. And then we'll add a wire. And then when we need a ground, 
uh, and then we will put another wire here. Uh, let's add a wire here and a wire here and then what we'll do is we'll add a voltage meter and we'll put that from ground across the resistor now both these are 1k resistors so uh, when we run it it should cut the voltage in half and what you'll notice if you right click on this and go to properties on the voltage source it'll say volts so we got 5 volts so we should see 2.5 out so analyst DC analysis actually sorry go to transient go ahead and click transient just run for one microsecond that's fine and it should pop up a window as soon as it's done calculating so yes okay so it is 2.5 volts, that is cool. So let's go ahead and close that. But let's say we wanted to see, save this program. So go save. Now you can change the location, but right now it's under basically, it's a very large stack. It's, um, you, as you can see, it's a very large stack, but basically it's under drive C, users, SC block, my drive. So you might want to create a new folder in that, but let's go ahead and leave it under user examples. And uh, resistor divider. And the reason I'm leaving it in user examples is because when I open up TIT again, it's going to look for your end users like examples for basically the schematic. So I'm going to say save, but I'm going to show you how to get back to it. So let's go ahead and close this really quick. And then we'll double click on TIT again down here just to show you that it works. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, hold on a sec. Yeah, there it goes. My bad. Okay, I wasn't patient enough. Go ahead and open. And then right here, resistor divider. And let's open it. And there it is. So, now let's go ahead and close TIT again. And let's go ahead and Apple Q to get out of Tina. Now, if we go back to here, the folder, there's a drive C. Go ahead and click on that. Go to users. Uh, ST block, I believe, and then we go to uh, actually, hold on a sec, I think it's Winskins. Uh, no, 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 actually, sorry, it's ST block, my documents, wherever they are under here. Uh, I probably should have left the other thing open. Application data, maybe? No. App, uh, okay, hold on. Let me reopen TIT and see the stack. Uh, so this is this is a little annoying. Is it's pretty buried in there, but you can eventually find it. So if we look under here, if it's my documents. Okay, so we're okay. ST block. Oh, so it was my documents. Okay, here's my documents. Then go to Design Soft because that's where Tina is, and then we want uh, uh, I forget which one because I've done this a few times. Users examples, uh, user examples, user exam. Okay, so it's right here, resistor divider. So it's actually this folder that it's in. Um, I've installed TIT a few times, so I'm going to remove these guys. You won't see all these guys. User examples, resistor divider. Now let's see. Let's go ahead and close this. If let's go ahead and see if it'll open up if I click on this. It probably won't. See, it's looking for an application, but you can copy this and uh, and send it to friends and stuff like that, and you should be able to open it. Oops, sorry guys. I am flying all over the place. Okay, so once again, to open up the folder, double click on TITNA down here, uh, the example I did, which will open up the software itself and click open and the resistor example and press open and there you go. So this is how you install TINA, TINA, TITNA using WinSkin. And uh, I don't think you guys will need x quartz, but I will show you, I will give you the link as far as that goes, and uh, I will upload this to YouTube.